Please be seated as I pray. Father, what a glorious thought for the believer that having placed trust in your son, Jesus Christ, there is one day when he will sing forever of your power to save, not because he anticipates it, but because he experiences it. I pray for us now as we remember your son, Jesus Christ, that you would help us to remember him according to your word. You would help us to remember him with love and affection and adoration that he deserves. And I pray it in his name. Amen. Well, as we come to our time around the Lord's table this morning, we're going to be looking at a passage in which Jesus points to his resurrection as the proof that he really is the Messiah. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 12? We're going to be looking at verses 38 through 40 together. And if you don't have a Bible, some men are going to be coming down the aisles. Simply raise your hand and they'll get one to you. If you don't own a Bible, please consider this Bible a gift from us to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. Matthew chapter 12. The story actually begins back in verse 22. Jesus has just healed a man who was possessed by a demon, and that man was also blind and mute. And the crowds who were there at the sight of this healing and his casting out of the demons we're beginning to talk about Jesus and whether or not he was indeed the Messiah. And of course, the Pharisees were there, and they hated the fact that Jesus' messianic identity had come into view. So they tried to discredit Jesus by requiring and demanding of him a sign. And the kind of sign they wanted was not merely an earthly miracle. They had seen plenty of those, and they had just witnessed one that very moment. What they wanted for them was something that they believed that Jesus could not produce for them. And that was evidence and affirmation from God in heaven that he was indeed the Messiah. So as we look at our passage, let's take note in verse 40, what Jesus says it is that is a sign to them as people. So reading verses 38 and 40 together. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus says in verse 40 that he was a sign in the same way that Jonah was a sign. Jonah was assigned to the people of Nineveh in that the experience that he had in his body before coming to them truly was the work of God. We see it there in verse 40. He was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster before coming to them and preaching to them a message of repentance. And Jesus is explaining that he would demonstrate in his body something that was also clearly, truly, uniquely only the work of God. And we see that at the end of verse 40. The Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the earth. Jesus is saying, I will be in the earth. I will be in the earth. But I'm only going to be there for three days. And after that, I will appear to you. And my appearance to you, Pharisees, is God's testimony to you that I am indeed the Messiah. The very thing that the Pharisees believed that Jesus could not do, he was promising to do. So he ties his claim of being the Messiah to his resurrection from the dead. And this truth is taught elsewhere in the New Testament. In the book of Romans, Paul opens that letter to the church in Rome by saying in chapter 1 that Jesus was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus' resurrection from the dead is God's declaration to us that Jesus is indeed the Messiah He's indeed his incarnate son. He's God in the flesh. And the reason why this is important to us this morning as we remember Jesus is because his deity has everything to do with salvation. Because God's design for salvation for the sinner requires two things. First, God's design requires that the sin of sinful man be transferred onto an innocent sacrifice. And secondly, it requires that that sacrifice or that substitute be capable of absorbing the wrath 
that a holy God has against that sin. And Jesus, and Jesus alone, satisfies both of those requirements. He was a sinless man, so he could serve as man's substitute in man's place on the cross. But he was also God. He was the Messiah. He was the son of David, as described back earlier in this chapter, meaning that he was able to permanently satisfy God's wrath against all of those who would put their trust in him. So if you're here today and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, this is our time to remember what Jesus has done for us. When the elements come to you, just take them and hold them and ponder Jesus' deity. Ponder his messianic identity, that he truly was the Son of God. And it's because he was the Son of God that he could go to a cross in our place, and he could hang on that cross, and he could endure God's judgment against everybody who would put their trust in him. And you've had a chance to ponder that and think about God's love for you and sending his Son and Christ's love for you, that he himself would do that. And when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, we want you to know two things. First, we want you to know that we are delighted that you are here. It is truly our privilege. It is a blessing to us that you would be here with us this morning. We pray that your time here is a blessing and it's an experience that, that will guide you and lead you in the days to come. The second thing we want you to know and understand is that this time, communion, is a time for people who've put their trust in Jesus Christ, who understand Jesus Christ to be the Messiah. And because he's the Messiah, they follow him and they love him and they trusted him with their salvation. As the elements come to you, simply take them and, and pass them by to the person next to you. But take this time and use it well. Take this time to observe what your Bible is showing you. What your Bible is showing you is that Jesus is the only way that sinful man can be reconciled to a holy God. He's the only way that a person can take their sin and have their sin removed from them so God sees them righteous in his sight. The person next to you, I myself, or any of the other elders will be available after the service, and we would love to talk to you about what it looks like to walk with Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. So the men are going to come and serve us, and everyone take the elements on their own when your heart is ready. Thank you.